Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlout with Raw Food Health Net, and today we're talking about kind of an interesting topic. We always hear that exercise is good for us, but some people don't just exercise a little. They are serious athletes. They are putting a lot of stress on their body. Uh, ultra marathon runners and marathon runners, uh, people who are just lifting tons of weight. So is this actually negative? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. I got an email. Uh, from a guy named Paul, who actually uh, I did not meet at the Woodstock Fruit Festival when I was there last week, but uh, who apparently uh, saw me. So uh, he says, Hi Andrew, I saw you and your girlfriend Brittany performing your badass acro routine at the Woodstock Fruit Festival talent show a few days ago. You guys are really impressive and show off what healthy people can do. It's impressive how strong and muscular you've managed to get while eating just raw fruits and vegetables, and it's tempting to want to follow this trend among raw vegans and start getting more aggressive with my physical fitness program. I know you used to be a smallish, a smallish distance runner before switching to acrobatics and strength training. Michael Arnstein and Grant Campbell are ultramarathon runners. Guys like Ted Carr do triathlons. Mike Velocity is Mr. Barbell, and Dr. Doug Graham is all about exercise and sports training as well. But it seems like the one raw vegan educator who thinks this may be a bad idea is Don Bennett, who I heard speak at Woodstock. He says that too much exercise is a bad idea and even dangerous to your health. Since I think you have a far better grasp of the relevant science than most in the raw food community, I was wondering if you could tell me if there was any good data to back up to his position or if he's just unnecessarily raining on everyone's parade and being overly cautious. Are some types of training better than others for long-term health? Did you switch away from running because you thought there was some risk involved? Thanks, Paul. So, Paul, I'm going to do my best job to give you a data-driven, unbiased response to your question, but... Uh, first, I'm just going to give you my biased answer, and that is that I spent the majority of my young life in a body that was fat and sick and really not vital enough to play. Because we talk about exercise, but really I see it as play. I like to be out and active and moving my body. It's a great joy to me. It's one of the best parts of my life. And if I found out that I was doing a degree of uh, just causing some degradation to my body because of that, that play... I think I would be willing to do it because I enjoy it enough. Um, but uh, that's kind of my own personal take on this, and uh, we'll talk about the data. So I don't want to put words in Don Bennett's mouth. I'm going to email him, and he'll probably give you a response in the comments, I have a feeling. Um, but I don't think I'm being unfair to say that he's not against exercise. He's just for exercise that is the least likely to cause harm and overstress to the body. He's a big fan of spirited walking and, as he calls it, and uh, sprinting and climbing, which he views as uh, fairly natural movements, which would have been part of our species movement pattern for hundreds of thousands of years. So uh, he just thinks that, you know, a lot of the, the like, for instance, long distance running, he views it as an ex exercise that's likely to cause some harm. He's not a fan of uh, things that cause a lot of stress to the body. You know, if it's got a, a disorder named after a tennis elbow, uh, you know, he's not a fan. So, um, do does he have a point? Well, certainly, a lot of sports and exercise that people do lead to injuries. I mean, how many long-term weightlifters do you know that have really messed up rotator cuffs or... Um, really just uh, aren't really capable of even doing the exercises that they love anymore because they've just injured themselves. Uh, I've heard long-term gym rats describe themselves as a collection of injuries. <laughs> so uh, clearly, um, if you are doing certain types of exercise, if you're doing them too vigorously, if you're not using proper form, you can seriously hurt yourself. And those injuries, whether or not they heal properly, are likely to affect you for the rest of your life. But... Um, Clearly, that is not the case with all exercises, um, so let's take a few minutes to look at the science. One of the most amazing things about exercise that no one ever talks about is that the stress of exercise triggers 
a type of cellular housekeeping. Normally, our cells have all this extra debris in them, old broken bits of protein and cellular membranes and old viruses and bacteria. And normally, the body tries to keep up with this workload. But when you put the cells under stress, either through starvation, i.e. fasting, or through exercise, autophagy is triggered. The body starts taking up these little bits of debris and burning them. And this process is critical to avoiding disease and issues like diabetes. It is incredibly powerful. But don't fool yourself. To trigger this mass increase in autophagy, you need to be causing cellular stress. In other words, if you want to clean house, you're going to need to cause a little bit of damage through exercise. We've known for years that exercise causes the creation of free radicals, which does oxidative damage. Ultramarathon runners actually generate so many free radicals during a race that they do significant damage to the DNA in many of their cells. Surprisingly, though, this does not appear to be a bad thing. Six days after the race, they have significantly less DNA damage than before the race. That old idea that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is probably wrong in most cases. Drink a little bit of alcohol, you're still likely to get cancer, more likely, than someone who doesn't drink that alcohol. But when it comes to exercise, tearing up the body a little bit seems to activate a compensation mechanism which leaves you healthier than you were before. One of the main reasons people say endurance training is bad is because it can lead to degradation of the joints. Damaged knees are usually the thing that people talk about. Yet this is not a position that's supported by the available science. Studies have consistently found that putting strain on our knees through exercise actually makes them stronger. The data available right now seems to indicate that really there's only one significant risk to really serious long-term endurance work, and that is that we could be damaging our heart muscles. Many runners love the book Born to Run. It explains why man's body is essentially a running machine designed to carry us over long distances. If you read the book, you may remember Caballo Blanco, who was a man who lived among the Tarahumara Indians doing a lot of endurance running. But yet a few years ago, Caballo died while out on a run. And the reason, question is why? A lot of people die during runs or as a direct result of the changes brought about by running, and this phenomenon has been called Phidippides cardiomyopathy after the original runner of the marathon. Oh. This journal article published by the Mayo Clinic does a really good job of reviewing some of the research that's looked into the downsides of long-term endurance running. Half a dozen studies have now reported a U-based curve. The most sedentary people are at the most risk, with moderate exercisers seeming to benefit the most, and high-intensity workouts seeming to generate a higher risk. Atrial fibrillation seems to be the biggest issue. It's basically an abnormal heartbeat that often develops among people who are endurance athletes, and it very often leaves, leads to a heart attack. This study of 52,000 cross-country skiers in Europe found that those who had completed the most races and who had the fastest finishing times were at the greatest risk of atrial fibrillation. Another study found that retired professional cyclists have more issues with their heart as well. The available data led the Mayo Clinic to conclude that people should limit themselves to no more than 60 minutes of chronic vigorous exercise per day. But if you're just determined to push your heart for more than an hour a day, consider that among all former Olympic athletes, including endurance athletes, they find that they live longer than general population, so at least there's that. One final note is that virtually everyone we're talking about in these studies is a part of the general population eating a diet consisting of meat, dairy, and eggs, and statistically speaking, all of them have some degree 
of arterial plaque in a diseased heart. If we were talking about healthy vegans eating fruit-based diets, we could possibly have a different story to tell. So Paul and everyone watching out there, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, personally, I think exercise is hugely important and I suggest that you find something that you love to do, something fun, play. Play, please play physically. Enjoy yourself. If you like this video, please like it and share it. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel. Thanks, see you later.